Good morning. We turn now, of course, to chapter 51. Yes, we're moving through Isaiah, but there's so much in these chapters, I advise you to read them again and look at them carefully, because the Lord will speak to you through these chapters. 49, 50, and now chapter 51. Here at the beginning of chapter 51, he's speaking to you and me again. He says, listen to me, you who pursue righteousness and who seek the Lord. Look to the rock from which you were cut and the quarry from which you were hewn. We are going through the second part of Lent now. And in a sense, it's good for us to meditate and think about these things. Because this is the rock from which we are cut. This is the quarry from which we are hewn. This is what brought the Christian faith into being. Jesus willing to suffer these indignities, to suffer in this way, to go to the cross in this way, to be mocked. Remember, always remember, the nails did not keep Jesus on the cross. If it was the nails that kept him there, then he was a very weak person indeed. What kept Jesus on the cross was his love, his love for you and his love for me. That's what kept him there. He knew he had to go through that, or you and I could not have eternal life. But now God is saying to you and me, look back to this again. And as we go through Lent, and as we approach the great feast of Easter, think about it again. Think about it again. Go back and wonder about it, that this is what God chose. In the scripture here, he goes back to Abraham. He says, look towards Abraham. Look at the, at the whole history of the Jewish people. You know, if, if anything was to prove the existence of God, it's the history of the Jewish people. Because over and over again, they were attacked. And over again, over again, they were despised. And even today, you know, anti-Semitism shows how much Satan hates the Jewish people. He hates them. Because over and over again, they have proven that God exists. Because over and over again, they've come back to their inheritance. And God has blessed them in that particular place. We are Christians. And we stand, as Gentiles, we stand alongside our Jewish people. We stand alongside them and we say quite simply, the Lord who created heaven and earth is going to bless us. We trust him. We look to our past. We read our past. We try to understand our past. The past that shows the church throughout the ages struggling the past that shows how the Jewish people have been treated throughout the ages. And we know for a certain that here in this life, we have no lasting inheritance. But in the life that is to come, when Jesus returns in glory, and when we join him there, or return with him if we've gone before him, when we give our resurrection bodies, and the whole of creation is brought once again under the control of God through his Messiah and through we who are his children. That is the time that we're looking forward to and that is the time when we will truly receive our blessing. Listen to me, my people, says God. Hear me, my nation. Instruction will go out from me. My justice will become a light to the nations. My righteousness draws near speedily. My salvation is on the way, and my arm will bring justice to the nations. As Simeon said when the, the child was brought to him in the temple, when Joseph and Mary brought in the child to give thanks for the birth and offer the sacrifice, he picks up the child in his arms, and he says, this is the light that will enlighten the nations. You see, Simeon knew. Simeon knew about the coming of Messiah. Why? Because Simeon had read Isaiah and he understood what Isaiah was saying. He realized this child is set for the falling and rising of many in Israel and a sign that will be spoken against. But he will truly be the light that enlightens the nations. It will spread to the furthest parts of the earth, to the isles at the end of the world. Yes, to Britain. Didn't know about the Americas then. But it'll go all the way to the, to the west, to the Americas, all the way across the Pacific, right throughout the world. The whole message is going to go out 
that God has created us and God loves us and God's going to bless us. Hear me, he says, you who know what is right. You people who have taken my instruction to heart. Do not fear the reproach of mere mortals or be terrified by their insults. You know, the world will turn against us. Yeah, it's a strange thing. They, they feel that they have to make fun of us. They feel they have to attack us. They have to feel they have to try to put us down. You know, now and again, a Christian will fail. Well, I fail so often in my life. I, I never point a fear, a finger of accusation to any Christian who fails. But, you know, we, they love to pick up on our failures, to broadcast to the world, you know, how we have failed. God says, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Anything you have ever done wrong, any failure you may have ever committed, I will compensate for it. Yes, every sin I will forgive, every single one. In my kingdom, there will be people without any trace of sin at all. Why? Because I have forgiven it. Amen. <laughs>